Greetings, dear ones. I am Kryon of Magnetic Service. There is a larger audience here than you know. And one of the attributes that we have described before is that when we present ourselves to those in a group that have given pure intent to listen, you create another energy. In this particular case, we call it the cryon entourage, but we don't identify it very often. In this particular case, it's filled with those you know. For tonight is a congratulatory message filled with information about that which is cellular and chemical but a message that could not have been given before this year. And so who comes into this room at this moment would be all of those who participated. Participated with you that perhaps you've loved and lost, including the parents of them and the parents before them. Because they are also light workers of their own. On the other side of the veil, they knew about you and the potential you would be here. It is confusing to the human being to think that it might work this way. Because I'm used, some of you have said that in the cycle of life, many of them have reincarnated yet again or on the planet, and they have, and they are. And yet a piece of their souls never leaves the other side of the veil. And that is the part that is here today. And so we invite them in at the moment. And some of you will feel them as they press upon you with their hands in love. And as they tell you, listen, listen, listen. Because this is a message a profound message of the evolution of the human being. We've given you information in the past. We now want to clear and give you more of. We want to qualify, clear up, and make more available some of the things to look forward to. And before we even begin with the premise of the message, we will tell you what we have said over and over, that what we are describing about what is happening to the human being, we have seen before. So we know it exists and we know the potentials of what we speak. But we can tell you we have no idea when you're going to allow it to be. When humanity is going through these kinds of shifts, it depends upon your free choice of how long you wish to make this particular transition last. It also depends upon how hard that dark part of the duality decides to fight against you the old energy of the planet will fight the changes. And it will fight them perhaps even to the death, and that is to say that a generation may have to leave fully before some of these happen. Old traditions and ways take a long time to go away. And sometimes that it requires even what you saw with the Israelis in the desert where they had a 40 year period of time where one generation had to completely leave before they would take another into the promised land and the reason we've given you before is the same reason we give today on what is happening now you cannot take the consciousness of slaves into the promised land a new generation that had never seen slavery in Egypt had to be then born and develop and grow. 
fed every day, taken care of, and loved in order for them to move into the lands that they now are in. That is not just a metaphor, it is an example. And that is what you face now. How long will it take? And that is not what we address today. We address today what's going to happen. We set the premise and describe what we have said before. The premise is this. Your DNA right now as a human being is operating at approximately 30 to 31 percent of its full capacity. And the capacity of the DNA because of this graduated scale that we have existed now and given you is a hundred percent. So that is as high as it goes and that would represent then the DNA that the masters had who walked this planet who could manipulate life and death who could manipulate that which is physical who could change the attributes of matter and many of them could and you sit at 30 percent approximately we told you that this was because of the free choice you had of consciousness and that consciousness is hooked to that which exists physically on the planet including the percentage of your DNA which you work at therefore what you think you create and through eons of time at this point in time it finds you at 30 percent now here's what I want to tell you is interesting and I can tell you this because of the discovery made last September in 2012 science now knows what we told you years ago that 90 percent of your DNA is information not codes 90 percent of your DNA is like the instruction manual like the control panel for the small three and a half percent which modifies the protein encoding parts and makes genes so you now have your definition by science of 90 percent of DNA as instructions and that is what we told you originally now here's what I want you to be very very clear about because you are operating at only 30 percent a human being would think in linear fashion and say to themselves well that means that we're going to start improving and science is going to see a delivery of more efficient DNA and somehow we're going to be able to look at it chemically perhaps and see this in the human genome as it shifts and changes and so I'm going to give you this information no you're not and here's why because in the information that you carry around in your body right now is a hundred percent the manual is complete but the consciousness of humanity is only allowing 30% of it to be seen. You carry 100% around with you. And so as the DNA becomes, if you would say, activated through time by some of the processes that I'm going to talk about yet tonight, it then captures more of the instructions that are already there you can see proof of this if you wish by some of the miracles that are performed by human beings on themselves called spontaneous remission they become their own masters and heal themselves completely and overnight the disease disappears all they have done is for a moment in time capture a hundred percent of their own DNA and so what you would attribute perhaps to God's miracles are theirs 
And there is more to look at as proof, as every once in a while a human being, through an anomaly of their own creation, will shift and capture a hundred for a moment. And then a miracle will occur in your vernacular, in your perception, not understanding. You simply saw what was available to you every day. Now, I want to solidify this now, as I tell you a little more about what is going to happen. We have given you information in the past about what to expect. But almost all of the information we have given you is about communication to your Akash. So we have told you that your DNA is going to start reading the Akash differently. That the wall that exists between death and birth is going to be lifted slightly. So that when you come back into the planet you will begin to remember better what you had learned the time before and the time before. And that this will serve the old souls because they will awaken early in life and not have to revisit the lessons that they did this time around. We've given you that information and that is a review. We've told you that as babies you will start to remember to walk. You will remember to read. You will remember that a hot stove is something to stay away from. That you will have an increase in instincts like the animals do on the plain. And that the human baby will not be quite as helpless as it is now. And that is Akashic inheritance, Akashic remembrance, and we've given you this information before. But we want to give some things to you at the chemical level that does not involve Akashic inheritance exactly. We extended it to food. We told you that some of you were being given information about spiritual diets. And if you follow this or that protocol, God will be happier with you. <laughs> and we told you that the truth of the matter is that in your Akash, that is to say, your profound past lives, you will have had lives where you lived a very long time and in a very long time in that place. And that is the food that you need to find today. And that goes against what necessarily you will eat as a healthy American or an unhealthy American. And that you will find yourself then reverting to a kind of food you never even were attracted to before, but now in a new energy it's starting to show itself and you're enjoying it. And it may require no meat, it may require a different way of thinking, and it doesn't mean it's spiritual for those around you, it just means Akashic remembrance of health. Now that's still about Akashic remembrance. So now let us move to what will happen chemically in your body with an increased percentage of activity of intelligence with your DNA. And that is what I want to talk about, is that which is body intelligence called innate. You're going to start getting closer to it. We've given you this information as well. The veil starts to lift between the conscious body and the innate. The things that you muscle test to find out when you really ought to know that consciously and you know there is a disconnect between them. It's going to start to lessen and you're going to start knowing intuitively about your body even more. But there's more than that. It has to do with intelligent DNA. That is DNA that starts to work conceptually instead of reactively. That becomes less linear and a little more quantum. Food. Some of you are enjoying what we would call Akashic inheritance, but with reservations because you're still intolerant of certain kinds of food. Now the intolerance is caused from a DNA that is not conceptual. It doesn't know why. It's just allergic. 
and part of it is allergic because of your culture and what you've already done against what you're trying to do with Akashic inheritance and they don't seem to mix totally and a hundred percent and they won't but if DNA is starting to become more intelligent it will analyze what you're doing and throw away those things which create intolerance and so what I am saying is this some of you are going to find in your journey in the next years that the things you know to stay away from are suddenly okay to eat and what it just simply means is a more enjoyable meal it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be healthier because you're staying away from the things currently that you're intolerant of but you really would like to have them <laughs> and so this is an intelligent DNA that knows that you want these things and life would be a little nicer and easier if you could have them and so it readjusts the very metabolic system of what a body is supposed to be allergic to and what it is not and it's not caused from anything you take it is not caused from any kind of a reaction from one chemical to another it is caused from DNA becoming smarter it goes into the manual and picks up a couple of percentage points and in those percentage points is what I will call the conceptual DNA that human beings are supposed to have it's going to show not just here but also in the next subject and that is the immune system the immune system right now is fairly basic it operates but it's fairly ignorant it puts out fires it doesn't ask where they came from it doesn't ask how smart they are it just puts them out that's a metaphor for what invades your body which would create the white blood cells to race to the scene and battle the fire and in certain cases it wins and saves your life almost on a daily basis for your immune system is geared to fight that which it knows and the simplest of bacteria which you live with are held at bay because of your immune system some of the vaccinations some of you have had have actually helped this <coughs> and they have created a, a whole series therefore of soldiers to help fight the battle but it's still linear it recognizes there's a fire and it goes and puts it out and dear one that's not good enough to put out the fire called cancer and dear one that's not good enough to put out a virus fire because both that I have just mentioned are conceptual invaders they have a plan one or both in some cases will take over the cells functioning parts some will trick the immune system in the in the case of cancer you have you have the growth which cannot be controlled that sometimes disguises itself or sometimes encases itself and the white blood cells can't even get in there's nothing to fight it's like a fire within a bubble that is impenetrable and it grows and grows and grows if the immune system were conceptual it would see the cancer for what it was what it was doing and put it out if the immune system were smart enough to be conceptual it would see the plan of a virus and it would thwart it by being smarter now this all resides in the instructions in every molecule of DNA in your body there's over a hundred trillion of them 
In order for this to happen, DNA itself is going to have to become a little more multidimensional, and we're going to get to that. As long as it stays in a linear state that it is now, which you're used to, 3D chemistry, you're not going to see much of an improvement. But as it becomes a little more multidimensional and picks up more of the instructions to allow it to be, it's going to fight the disease in a whole different way. That's a promise. So this is the human being growing into a whole nother creature. One you wouldn't recognize, perhaps, if you came back in a, in a couple of hundred years or, or had a time machine to go forward, you'd see the differences. One is linear, one is not. Oh, that's good news, crying. I love that. That means we're finally going to cure the common cold. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> this is not profound information. You should know by now. The cold is a recalibrating device to balance you. It's needed and it's necessary. And all of you will continue having them. Now, you can have too many, which tells you it's a little out of balance. Or you can have one or two a year, and it is in balance. But it recalibrates the system. It develops antibodies for certain kinds of things that then are good to go. And you need it. It's an irritant. It doesn't kill you. And it doesn't have to develop into something bigger. And it'll always be there just to let you know. <laughs> but there are a couple of that are lurking that are really profound. And I would like to tell you, besides the immune system and its ability to fight diseases and viruses, no matter what they are, because it becomes more conceptual, the one that you're going to like the best is the recalibration of the body clock. You're working at 30%. And you live a certain amount of years. Do I have to paint a picture? You're designed to live a lot longer. Now in three dimensions, the biologists, even the smartest ones, will go after what they believe is the cause of aging. And in 3D, they're right. For at 30%, DNA shortens the telomeres with every progressional division of cells. And the chromosome itself starts to become morphed into something less than it was at birth. And so you do not have a complete molecule anymore. It's a little different. It's a copy of a copy. Now what we have told you in the past is that in the instruction sets of the DNA are the stem cell blueprints for every kind of cell in the body. The blueprint represents a new one, a perfect one, one that is with you when you're born. As your body starts to then increase in its efficiency there are a certain time that you would regenerate that will begin going back and looking at the instructions and instead of making a copy you will pick up a new one. The result of this is a slowing of the aging process. It's a slowing that you can see, that those around you can see, that your neighbors and loved ones can see. You're not getting older as fast as they are. How do you like it so far? Now this can only happen if that part of your DNA which used to be linear becomes a little more multidimensional. And we're going to talk about that. So it seems that, does it not, the key to all of this is getting out of the paradigm of a three-dimensional chemistry system. A system that is only reactive. 
one chemical reacts to another and creates something else that even includes synapse and so you're also looking at what we would call the intellectual high point of the brain how high can you think my partner has told you that in ancient Tibetan numerology that right now humanity has only seen up to the number 33 as one that has a master number with a definition and that even the next master number which is 44 is a mystery if you look at the number of master numbers from 11 to 99 and count them and realize you only have three you're looking at the same kind of scenario as your DNA you're not even halfway there these things can be identified when the synapse of your brain that is to say that part that is now in 3d which will become more multi-dimensional can grasp the concepts of the 44 and the 55 it's all related and I'm here to tell you that past 2013 that's what's going to start happening with humanity now how is this going to happen and what is required it's what you're already doing old soul you're sitting here listening to these kinds of messages and right now they are academic and we tell you we don't know when they're going to happen but watch for them here they are they're coming and you'll leave this place and you'll say I love the information but I'd sure like it now <laughs> does it help if I told you you'll all see it maybe not the way you look now <laughs> but you'll be here you'll be here because that's what old souls do they keep coming back to participate in the victory I want to tell you about the time capsules and DNA in the instruction sets that are not obvious to science there lurks time capsules of release of information and they are triggered by human consciousness they are linked to what is called the Gaia consciousness which is the only measurement you have of all of humanity and all of humanity must shift and change a little bit in order to release the time capsules in personal DNA so it's hard for you to do this alone if not impossible for this takes its cue from the crystalline grid of the planet this is the grid that remembers human action and responds to human emotion and so Gaia is involved in all of these things so here we are again with a puzzle that is not quite the puzzle it used to be as humans change their personal consciousness and intent as they become more compassionate Gaia changes it already has isn't it interesting that the prophecy of the ancients about the eagle and the condor were not about humanity they were about the planet <laughs> do you understand moving to a place in the planet anchoring the kundalini in the planet the journey of the feathered serpent and the awakening of the puma in the planet and they're not talking about DNA and they're not talking about anything except Gaia <laughs> because that is the link to you and that is what is beginning and it's already starting to enhance human DNA look at the kids your children are different your grandchildren parent if you're in the room and have any are real different they are beginning to have more conceptual thinking the synapse is already starting to change their DNA is working better than yours does 
or did. And so your job is to continue creating compassion, curing the planet of its disease of war, curing the planet of those things which do not sit well with integrity, curing the planet of any other disease does that not honor the love of God and that which is Gaia and Pachamama. And as you do this and solve the puzzles in your life, Gaia changes, the crystalline grid changes, and that then is passed to the kids. <laughs> now here's some good news you should know. The system begins to change even further. If time capsules are released in your DNA, and by the way, don't get me wrong, old soul, you don't have to be reborn to have this. Just like those who experience spontaneous remission, you can do it yourself. Because an old soul who's been on this planet all those times has got the power of compassionate intent and action. As you clean up your life, you'll start getting younger. Did you know that? You're going to see it in your own DNA. Time capsules that are released, that is to say, the new information which starts to come from that pool of, of information in the 90%, once it is released, it stays there and it is inherited. Therefore, none of your offspring have to relearn it. And as they release theirs through whatever they discover on the planet will be passed to their offspring. A new kind of inheritance, you might even call it quantum inheritance, is at hand. This truly is the fast track to an enlightened society. If there were new du no duality on the planet, you would have this in as few as five generations. You'd work at 50%. Because the natural instinct of the human body is to become more conceptual and take the things that it needs and works with. But what is in your path that would restrict that kind of growth is the remains of the old duality that will continue to fight you. It is appropriate and we've seen it before. It's part of the process. 2013 is a tough year. Old soul, if you know why it's tough and you understand the full impact and the profundity of why it's tough, if you really understood that, you'd go home and have a party. And you congratulate yourselves for doing the unthinkable and that is creating the seeds of a planet that will ascend. By creating and growing and planting the seeds in your own home that will lead perhaps to a planet without war. Oh, you'll never get along. Can I tell you that? But the solutions will not be to kill each other. And that will be a good thing. And that is the potential we see. Even today, if you look at your societies, whereas societies would go to war first, and now it'll be last, and there'll come a day when it just won't happen. Can you imagine a reallocation of funding when there are no more weapons? <laughs> and what you might spend it on. This is in your future. Old soul, you are planting the seeds for it. But chemically, your DNA is so ready. The time capsules that are hiding are ones that are going to take advantage of something that is very difficult technically to tell you about. We keep talking about quantum DNA and that is not correct. And we know it is not correct. 
DNA can never be a quantum particle. But DNA has quantum attributes because it has a field which actually affects the spin of quantum structure in atoms. You might say it broadcasts quantum information. And that in itself makes it a quantum broadcasting name I cannot give you. You don't have it yet. You don't have it. My partner can't give it to you. I gave it to him three times. He cannot give it to you. It doesn't exist. This is the exercise at hand. How can you know what you don't know? How can I tell my partner what is coming when he has no words for it? Imagine a time capsule being released so that your DNA can do a better job at broadcasting a quantum field around its own cellular structure and can make the immune system intelligent can bring about a marriage between the conscious brain and the innate there is no name for it yet oh but there will be and scientists will see it and they will label it and when it starts to occur dear ones you will remember this channel you might even laugh at the fact that my partner had no name for it yet and you will <laughs> do you understand why this is a celebration you understand why the entourage in this room which has been with you since the moment we began is applauding you understand that this particular message I could never have given you in 2012 not like this because now I can tell you what's going to happen and before then it was only a potential crying you mean it's it really is it's it's more than a potential and I will say yes it's more than a potential and the reason I can tell you that is because there are those walking around in humanity right now who have it I'll call them quantum prodigies children that are going to live longer and not catch anything who will not have disease and you'll study them and you'll put them under microscopes and you're not going to see anything different until you get the quantum invention that we have told you about and then you're going to see it some of you understood this message and some of you have not and for those who have not I will summarize it and say blessed is the human being who feels that they are part of this compassionate change on the planet and capture that within the love of God inside themselves for they are in control of the future <laughs> and that is why there is a congratulation going on a party in this room and it will continue even later today in the initiation ceremony to come and I'll be there in the visions that some of you will have perhaps in the dreams there's more here going on than you think and I'm here to tell you that 23 years ago it was only a potential and today it is a reality I would not tell you these things if they were not accurate and true I also understand dear human being that you're very impatient and that you wish they were here now you said the same thing a decade ago and a decade ago and a decade before that it will happen and you'll see it <laughs> and so it is